Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry uh, video series. This is number 18 and the third in our little short series on the industrial production of sodium hydroxide. We've looked at the mercury process, we've looked at the diaphragm process, now we're going to look at the membrane process. So effectively the goal again just to recap is that we're after the production of sodium hydroxide as a product we are using the method of electrolysis of brine or sodium chloride solution um, as our method for doing so. So those those fundamentals have not changed but some of the processes and the ways of doing that um, have changed a little bit through each of these three processes. So it's, it's a really good idea for you to put a little table together that compares the three processes and what you think you would want to include if you were making a comparison of those. This could be a, um, you know, a six mark question, for example, and if that was the case, you'd want to make sure that you had really compared each of these very carefully in terms of their chemistry, in terms of their impact on the environment, or at least potential impact on the environment, um, costs and levels of purity and so on. So let's look at this last one. <clears> Our <throat> biggest problem with the diaphragm process is the diaphragm was made of asbestos and this is really not a good thing. We now know a lot of consequences of the use of asbestos and that's come into not just its initial exposure but ultimately even, even sort of the third level down the track where people are, are doing work on their homes. Uh, and just the sort of the DIY that you might do around your own home and exposing themselves to asbestos um, as a result of just some minor home improvements. So this is a big one, this is a problem. We don't wanna be using asbestos uh, in anything really. Um, and for this process to work, we needed to get rid of the asbestos and replace it with a material that was going to be better. And in some ways we've come full circle. PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene, it's where we started the whole chemical journey, looking at polymers made from um, the monomer ethene. So this is just a derivative tetra of four fluorines attached to our ethylene, and uh, obviously lots and lots of these units together to form the polymer PTFE. This is our membrane, it's a plastic. So it's a plastic kind of uh, polymer membrane, which doesn't contain asbestos. This also, as a consequence of the presence of these fluorines, which are not only high in their uh, electronegativity, they form polar bonds with the carbons that are in the main chain of the polymer. And what they are going to be able to do is uh, act as an ion exchanger. So the presence of different types of uh, bonds within the polymer allows different interactions to occur between different types of molecules. And what we have is a membrane that allows ion exchange between the two half cells. So in terms of the comparison with the um, diaphragm process, there's a lot of similarities between these two. And really, the major change is that, um, uh, that substitution of the asbestos uh, diaphragm for the uh, polymer membrane. It still allows sodium ions to migrate through the membrane, but the chloride and the hydroxide ions do not. And this is the, um, the slight negative charge that we get as a result of polarity, presence of anions, and the attraction for the positive or cations to move through the membrane. The inert nature of the membrane also allows it to be exposed to strong alkaline solutions, of which sodium hydroxide is certainly one for long periods of time without um, breaking down. As far as the rest of the chemistry is concerned, everything else is pretty much the same as the diaphragm cell. So I won't re, um, uh, review it again in the same sort of detail, except to say the first equation, again, remember, had the sodium ions uh, left out of it as a net ionic equation, removes all spectator ions, but the full Ionic, uh, the full equation does return the sodium ions there, so we get our sodium hydroxide as our desired product from our key raw material, which is our brine. So here again is the diagram, same sort of diagram as previously, um, a cycling of brine through the um, left cell. Here is the chlorine, so again, because we're going from chloride ions uh, to chlorine gas that only happens 
with the addition, uh, with the release of electrons. And to balance that equation, this therefore is an oxidation, therefore this must be the anode here. And on the other side, it's the water molecules. Again, uh, as you've seen previously, the water molecules basically turning into um, hydrogen and hydroxide ions. And again, the only way they can do that is by taking electrons in, two in this case. And um, so this therefore is the reduction. And we have the cathode here. Here is the um, PTFE membrane which allows the migration of sodium ions from the brine through across into the um, reduction half cell. And that means that our sodium hydroxide is actually going to appear as a product of this particular reaction. Just like the diaphragm process, it has a series of small cells. The um, voltage and currents, again, about the same. Remember, because these are electrolytic cells, we don't get energy out of them. We have to put electrical energy in in order to facilitate the chemical reactions that are occurring. We still have uh, sodium chloride, which affects the purity. So again, the purity of this particular one, not as high as the um, mercury cell, for example. Um, but nevertheless, because of the nature of the membrane, um, it's, it's a drop from the mercury, I'll just put Hg, but it's slightly higher in purity um, than the asbestos membrane. So we get, we get two benefits from this one. One is the replacement of the, the very dangerous asbestos material, but also a slight increase in the purity. The same gases are being given off and so therefore need to be dealt with in the same way, but this solves the problems of both asbestos and mercury as uh, potential environmental contaminants of these processes. The costs associated with this process are going to be linked to the fact that it is a petrochemical derivative. And of course, all of the things that we talked about in the first topic around ethylene, maybe being able to produce ethylene from ethanol by dehydration and ethanol through fermentation bio, um, from biomass, and maybe is a way around this as well. But there are still issues associated with greenhouse gas emissions as a consequence of using uh, either of those two methods. But in comparison to the other two, this is the one that is being used most uh, for the commercial production of sodium hydroxide. And for the reasons that are here, it's also much better for the environment. Thanks for watching.